Good morning, and welcome to the Church of the Resurrection and morning prayer in the garden. Thank you to those of you who are here with us in person, and thank you to those who are joining us to pray this morning live or later. It is wonderful to see the masks of those of you who are here in the garden. Morning prayer begins in your order of worship or on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in reciting the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Please be seated for the readings. The psalm today is Psalm 105. We will read it in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory is his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters and neck was put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled into the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilpha and Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph 
more than any of his other children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you not your brother? Are you not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to them, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered, them, delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into the pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue them, rescue him out of their hands and restore him to their father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with, robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ish Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our own brother, our own flesh and blood. The brothers agreed. Then some Midianites traders passed by, they threw Joseph up, or they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The canonical for today is the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the spring of salvation. On this day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountains by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. 
But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scriptures for this morning offer us a lot of doors. The story of Joseph and his brothers from Genesis, the psalm, and of course the miracle of Jesus coming to his disciples, walking on the water, of Peter climbing out of the boat to join him. But what strikes me this morning about each of these stories is that in each of them there is distance. We have a lot of empathy for Joseph, who finds himself bundled off to a foreign land, but we also know how the story will progress and end. But if we listen closely to the opening lines, there's something interesting here. Sure, Joseph's brothers don't much like him, but the scripture is pretty clear they have some justifications for their frustration. Not only is he their father's favorite, as it turns out, Joseph is something of a tattletale, presenting a bad report of his brothers about their shared work of tending the family's flocks. Even if a bad report is factual, I don't think any of us appreciate being called out to fathers or bosses or anyone for that matter. But their first instinct isn't to do him harm. It's simply to put some distance between themselves and their troublesome little brother, it isn't until his father sends them after them that their intentions turn darker. And then there's the distance in our gospel reading. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead. Jesus made. The Greek verb here translated as made can also be translated as to compel or force. That's interesting, isn't it? Surprising even. I don't think of Jesus as making or forcing the disciples to do much of anything. Calling, instructing, asking, but not making. And this is, in fact, the only time that Matthew uses this particular verb at all, much less in terms of Jesus' instructions to his followers. There are times where the gospel writers tell us specifically why Jesus does something, but this is not one of them. And if we look to Jesus turning to prayer and rest on the mountain, maybe Jesus wants to be by himself for a little while. But I think there may be a little more to that. Just before this, Jesus and his disciples had spent all day with a huge crowd of thousands of people, people in need of healing, who had been following Jesus and searching him out. Near the end of the day, the disciples had wanted to send them away into villages to find food. But instead, Jesus had them feed everyone with the food that they had on hand. A few loaves of bread and a few fish that somehow were not only enough for the gathered crowd, but when the meal was over, proved to be in excess. While Jesus very well may need some time apart, I suspect the disciples do too. They've had a very big day. They've been in a huge press of thousands of people. They've been witness to healing and teaching. And we can only guess at how they have been pressed for details or inside information by those in the crowd. Not to mention they have been a part of a very big miracle. But it seems they must be made to step away. Perhaps they are too energized from all that's happened. Perhaps they're too stubborn, like a toddler who insists they're not tired long past their bedtime, even as their heads droop towards shoulders or chest. 
Or perhaps they are too protective of their teacher who wants to make a proper farewell of all those gathered. Whatever the case, it is now more than any other time that Jesus must compel the disciples. And with all things, even if there is some frustration in this mix, I must believe that Jesus compels them out of his love for them. I suspect they, as much as perhaps even more than Jesus, need some time apart, some time to rest. Any one of those things from their day is a lot, but even beyond all of those things of the past day or the past weeks is the dawning realization that the man they've been following is a lot more than just a wise and challenging teacher, even more than a healer who can cure both body and mind. Often the miracle of Jesus walking on the water is described as the aha moment when Jesus recognized that Jesus is the Son of God. But I don't really think it's the moment. I think that when Jesus and the disciples are reunited, the wonder of Jesus defying probability isn't the revelation, but it's the confirmation of what they've already come to know through what they've experienced, through what, with some time to themselves, they've been able to maybe process, maybe even talk amongst themselves to finally give words to what they have come to understand. Truly, you are the Son of God. Time apart can lead us to understand new things, but more often time apart helps us to understand what we already know, to define what we value, to give words to what we love most. We too have been compelled into time apart from one another as a community for far longer than just an evening or even a week. We too are separated out of love, out of concern for one another, no matter how much we may not like it. What will this distance help you to understand, to define, to recognize the value of what you already know? How does this time of distance give words to your love of neighbor, of community, of one another? Until the time when we are reunited, may that understanding, may that love, may the spirit of what we value most strengthen and comfort us while we are still apart. Amen. Our service continues on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer in your order of worship. Please stand together and join with me in reaffirming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide, guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, 
nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we, we all, all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Key and Glenda, our bishops, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those recovering from hurricane and tropical storms, the people of Beirut, David and family, and all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus or its complications, and all those who are anxiety or suffering in isolation, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On page 101 or in your order of worship, please join me in praying the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Friends, God made you. God sees you, God knows you, and God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
figure I'll bring this every week. That's great. That's all right. Nobody else has to deal with it, but I think it's right. Pretty. I like it. It's in our set. Uh,